What are we showing everyone today? Uh, solar side of things. The solar panels, batteries, the entire pre-board system. Owen starts talking solar. I don't see him for the rest of the day, so I'm going to leave this one to him. Right, so we decided to go, or I decided to go with the Victron side of things. I believe it's the Rolls Royce, um, each to their own. I've designed this purely around redundancy and days in lieu or autonomy. The beauty of the Victron side of things is once you turn the inverter on, you leave it on. It's not a call out to the missus and say, I'm turning the inverter off, can you go and switch across to mains or vice versa? Literally, if you're at a caravan park and you're about to leave in the morning, the missus halfway through a smoothie, as an example, I can literally come here and just disconnect the power point. You don't even see a flicker in the lights for when it switches across from mains to batteries. That's the beauty of it. It's just turn it on, let it go. Got it located here under the couch. I'll show you a bit more from inside because there's full access from inside as well. Um, here is purely just to help with some natural ventilation. We've also going to incorporate some mechanical ventilation as well. Uh, but this is just a sealed door unit here. The solar panel side of things, we literally Deleted a couple of things we didn't think we needed on the roof or relocated a couple of things so we could fit as many solar panels on as possible. So we've got eight panels up there and we've got it just under 1.6 kilowatts of power. Solar, in my mind, the panels are cheap uh, for what you're getting out of them. So I wanted to put on as much as possible. Come on inside and we'll show you a bit more of the interior. Owen would say it's a thing of beauty. Check out that. Right, so here you can see the access from inside. So I've designed this with Solar for RVs, who made the pre-wired kit for us, to be around redundancy. So we've deliberately put in two of a few items. So not just because of the size of the solar panels that we've got, um, but we've also put in two solar chargers. So if for some reason something does fail, because you do put this stuff through a lot of vibration, um, not that we expect anything to fail, you going to still be able to bring in 50% of your solar. Also, I've gone with two DC-DC chargers. Um, two reasons for that. The tow vehicle will cope with that. But second of all, if for some reason I do have a problem with one and I'm waiting for the new one to come or something, then I've got the other one that's going to be able to do the job. Keep bringing in 50%. Inverter side of things, this is going back to as well on that turn it on, switch and forget. You don't have to then switch across from batteries to mains. Uh, to solar and let it does everything it'll choose what it wants to bring in and you can variable that as well you can choose how much you want to bring in of one thing or another i could talk our water tanks are also running through this as well so they come up onto the screen above which i'm about to show um, but this is giving you a general layout of what's here the solar controllers we've designed it so they're not really going to get above 80 percent capacity so you're not pushing them really hard even though you can go to 100 percent there's no need all you're going to do is create a lot more heat under there and make them work harder anyway we'll talk about the screen just a quick simple layout of what the screen is um, it's pretty early morning so that's why we're sort of only bringing in uh, probably a third of our power at the moment, maybe a bit over. So bottom right is PV charger, so that's telling you what you're bringing in from the sun. Top right is how much AC loads the van's pulling at the moment. Down the bottom is then DC, so hence your external fridge or your internal fridge, um, charging phones and stuff like that. So it's doing both all the time. It's not just doing AC loads or doing DC loads. Bottom left is state of charge of where your battery's at. Um, it's showing pretty much what's coming in, where it's going out, and what it's going out to. Top left is then if you're connected to mains, which we are not at the moment, this will then highlight. Also, with our tanks integrated onto here, you can switch straight across and see what the tanks are doing. This is pretty much different views of screens that you can see throughout it. So our batteries are located under the bed in a sealed unit. Uh, the BMS is there also. They're located very close to the inverter so we don't get voltage dropping. There are 1,000 amps of lithium. We've got that set so we can go down to 20%. You can potentially go down to zero, but I just don't have that set in the parameters because I don't want to go down that low. There are a pre-constructed cell uh, that I had left over from a job of when we were doing off-grid homes. And Solar for RVs who made the uh, pre-wide kit have their own types of batteries, but also deluxe as well. So batteries, I don't go into it a lot because there's a plethora of so many different brands out there. Is he still going? Do you want me to do the recap? So what we have is a 3000 watt inverter, Victron, just under 1.6 kilowatts of panels and a thousand amps of lithium batteries. See, that's how you do it the short way. Yeah. 
Anyway, if you see us on the road, don't hesitate to stop Owen and talk solar with him, but just expect that it could take a few hours. As long as it takes. And some beers. Yeah, always beers. (laughs) 